Okay, that coffee is cold by now. Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to talk about something very special. Mechanical keyboards. If you're anything like me, you've probably stumbled upon the rabbit hole that is mechanical keyboards. By now there are so many mechanical keyboard channels on YouTube just doing content about keyboards and it's a huge rabbit hole that I've sunk a decent amount of time into and you maybe have as well. I've been aware of the custom mechanical keyboard space for a couple of years now, well before its sudden rise in popularity. For years, pretty much since 2014, I've been using mechanical keyboards, but always cheaper ones, and I always thought, yeah, custom mechanical keyboards exist, but why would I spend five times more than what I've already paid on something that basically does the same? I mean, a faster computer has immediate value. It allows you to do more stuff faster. A bigger monitor or a second monitor allows you to display more stuff at the same time. A better microphone makes you sound better, a better mouse might have a horizontal scroll wheel that helps you navigate your code better, but a more expensive keyboard doesn't make you better or faster. The only thing it might do better is glow really cool and make you feel like an elite hacker while you plan your bootleg Mr. Robot TV show called I tried to learn about cybersecurity for an afternoon but then there was math and I gave up. A couple of months ago I completely forgot these rational thoughts and I bought one. What made me change my mind? The biggest factor that led me to this purchase was just pure curiosity. A friend of mine got into the hobby and I've been watching a bunch of videos on this topic and I was just really, really curious to try one of these keyboards. The other factor that made me change my mind was the realization that I spend a lot of time sitting in front of my keyboard. I'm a programmer and I'm a computer science student and I work on articles and videos like this one and I spend a lot of time sitting at my keyboard and typing on it. The amount of time I spend using a keyboard every day is a lot higher compared to other everyday objects. And if you're a developer, that's probably true for you as well. I like to look at purchases as an hourly cost of use. Maybe you're a videography studio and you have a piece of equipment that you only use maybe one day out of the year. That's eight hours every year. And if you pay 250 euro for that, then that's about 31 euro-ish per hour per year. And that's pretty high. For example, a keyboard that you use five days a week for about eight hours every day, and yeah, let's just pretend like we don't use our keyboards on the weekends, then you're looking at, let me check, 12 cents an hour. Desk jobs like programming usually don't require any super expensive equipment. You don't need any piece of machinery or any special tools. An affordable laptop is usually everything you need. But if you're spending a decent chunk of your waking hours sitting at your desk, might as well make it a nice environment, right? And that's the reason why desk setups are such a popular topic nowadays. And for keyboards, it's pretty much the same. I think a lot of people had this realization, especially during COVID, that they're sitting at home, sitting at their desk pretty much all day, and why not make it something nice? But what makes custom mechanical keyboards so special? What is the justification for having a price tag five times or 10 times that of a standard keyboard? What is so different about them? The whole reason why the custom mechanical keyboard space exists is customizability. No matter what preferences you have for typing feel, sound, aesthetics or functionality, there's probably a perfect keyboard build out there for you. In the following, I will outline these aspects in a bit more detail, starting with typing feel and sound. Being able to customize and build a keyboard that feels just the way you want it to is probably the biggest reason why people invest in good mechanical keyboards. Many people aim for very smooth switch actuation that is generally described as creamy in the community. Another big difference I noticed when I got my KBD67 Lite R3 was the stability of the keys. There's no wobble, rattle or any other unpleasantness you always find on cheaper mechanical keyboards. Here is how the spacebar on my old keyboard rattles. And this is the spacebar on my new keyboard. This is mostly due to the use of high quality stabilizers and switches. Cheap switches tend to have larger tolerances around the stem. Yes, custom mechanical keyboards are quite expensive, mostly because parts are often produced in smaller quantities, but the build quality generally is exquisite. Sound also plays a big role for many people in the community. There is a plethora of sound test videos for different keyboards on YouTube, but here is how mine sounds.
And here is how my old keyboard with super cheap clicky switches sounds like. Ignore the mismatched keycap set, please. Typing feel will mostly be affected by the type of switch you are using and sound will be changed by many things. Different cases, foam layers, plates, switches and keycaps. Foam for example is often used to fill hollow spaces and dampen any unwanted resonances. The second reason is the most important reason and it goes hand in hand with every other aspect that I mentioned and that's the modularity of it all. Different parts can result in a higher or lower pitched sound. Depending on what kind of typing feel or sound you are searching for, you can switch out any parts or add modifications to make it happen. The third aspect I want to talk about is aesthetics and it plays a huge part in the keyboard community. There is an incomprehensible amount of customization possibilities from different keycap sets, different cases and cables to the crazy world of artisan keycaps. A good looking keyboard is the centerpiece every nice setup needs. The last aspects are size, layout and firmware. Depending on how you use your keyboard, a different size or layout might be beneficial. I personally use a 65% keyboard. I never needed the number pad and I rarely use the function row but I wanted dedicated arrow keys. There is no need to waste so much desk space with a full-sized keyboard if you never use a third of it. As with anything in the custom keyboard world, there are a bunch of possibilities in all shapes and sizes. From full-sized keyboards with number pads on the left side to ortholinear 40% keyboards or even split keyboards. Just keep in mind, the weirder the keyboard you want, the more expensive it gets. A couple of years ago, I switched to a US layout keyboard because the German keyboard layout is horrible if you're a programmer like me. Most programming languages require the use of many special characters. The US layout has all special characters in a lot more accessible places and I don't need to do annoying hand gymnastics when I'm working. The German umlauts can easily be set to be used within a different layer using the modifier keys. I do this with the help of a keyboard layout called EUR key. But this keyboard layout has to be installed on the computer you are using. This leads me to my last point. The firmware on most custom keyboards is amazing because you can fully configure them with VIA. The VIA program allows you to completely change what any button does on your keyboard. Want your W key to pause your music every time you hit it? Extremely impractical but possible. Being able to change your layout however you please is super helpful. For example, my keyboard has four extra buttons on the right, which I have bound to delete, home, end, and the tilde key, because that doesn't fit on the top left where it was replaced by the escape key on 65% keyboards. But you can map any key however you want it, whatever works best for you. There is also the option of creating custom macros with VIA, and with the ability to map anything anywhere, you could map keyboard shortcuts of your favorite IDE. For example, you could have a dedicated key for formatting your code. To conclude, a more expensive keyboard won't make you better at your craft. It won't make you better at programming, it won't make you faster at programming, it won't make you more productive probably. There really isn't any quantifiable or measurable benefit to this. <laughs> Am I an idiot for paying 250 euro for a keyboard? The real benefit in my opinion is a lot more subtle than that. And the reason why I'm glad that I got a mechanical keyboard or a good mechanical keyboard is that every time I sit down and start to work or start to type something, it's just really fun. It's really pleasant. I like the sound. I like the feel. It's, it just makes boring tasks and mundane tasks a lot more enjoyable. Every time I look at this keyboard, it just gives me the urge to go and type on it because it's just, I don't know, it's just fun. And every time I sit down for work and I work my programming job, it's just a more enjoyable experience. Probably not everybody can understand the fascination with this hobby and that's fine. But I think the biggest problem why people can't really understand what makes people enjoy this hobby is that they don't have a space where they can try it. I didn't have a space as well where I could try nice keyboards. I had only one friend and he lives pretty far away so I didn't really have any place where I could try a really nice keyboard. Watching YouTube videos on the topic simply can't convey the typing feel that you get from a keyboard like this. Yeah, you can understand the sound and what goes into making a keyboard like this, but you can't really understand the typing feel and I feel like that's the most important part. Even normal people like my dad sitting down at this keyboard for the very first time trying it out have this immediate response of wow, that feels great, where can I get one? And then I tell them the price and they go, eh, okay, maybe I don't want one after all. But I think most people can appreciate all of these factors that... Uh, <laughs> I feel like most people can appreciate the factors we've been talking about. Build quality, 
sound, typing feel, they can appreciate all of those because they have this instant visceral response to it. But they just don't have a space, most people don't have a space where they can try it out. And I think if most people had a space to try it out, then they would also enjoy this hobby and get into it. But I think a lot of people don't have that option and that's why they just write it off. I also didn't have the chance to try one myself before I bought it, but I just had this burning curiosity to try one and that's why at some point the curiosity overweighed the cons of doing it and then I bought one and I'm really glad I did. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. My exam phase has yeah, flattened out a bit. It's a bit more relaxed now and I have a bit more time to work on videos like this. I, yeah, that's the biggest problem. I don't have that much time to work on videos. I really enjoy doing it, but it's just such a time consuming process. And if you enjoyed this video, it would be really nice if you could show your appreciation by leaving a comment or yeah, leaving a like or even subscribing because that shows me that I'm doing something, yeah, reasonable with my time. <laughs> Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.